uh, in a group on a on every day. Okay, na? Okay. Okay. So, guys, this is our complete syllabus of CCNA, which we are going to discuss. Clear? So, let's start from there. Just a minute. If you guys want, I will share with you guys also. Okay, so guys, ah, uh, this is our first part. In first part, we are going to cover fundamentals of network. Mm -hmm. So, in fundamentals of network, we are going to start from the introduction of network. Then we will cover networking device, Ethernet cables and port, OSI and TCP/IP models. Then we will discuss IPv4 and what is IPv6, what is subnetting, how we can perform the subnetting, types of subnetting like FLSM and VLSM. Then after we will cover the MAC address. We will cover uh, layer two, layer three, layer four headers as well. We will compare TCP versus UDP as well because this is very important thing uh, in terms of interview. Then after we'll discuss the what is CDP, what is LLDP. We will discuss ARP, what is ICMP, what is the use of ARP, what is the use of ICMP, what is trace route, how we can perform the trace route. Everything we are going to cover here. Then after we'll compare the what is unicast, what is multicast, and what is broadcast. I hope you guys understand these things in the fundamentals of network, right? Everyone. Now. Yes, we understand. After completing the fundamental of network, we are going to start the switching part. In switching, our first topic will be what it switch, how switch will behave. Basically, these things we cover here in networking device. Okay. So in switching part, we will start from the VLAN. What is VLAN? What is native VLAN? What are the types of VLAN? Why we need VLAN? How we can configure VLAN? Even how we can troubleshoot the VLAN? Everything we are going to cover in the VLAN and net native VLAN part. I hope you guys understand it. Now, in next topic, we are going to cover the access port. What is trunk port? How we can cover how we can configure the access port, how we can configure the trunk port, what is the use of access port, what is the use of trunk port, how access port is different from the trunk port, everything we will cover here in this part. Then after we have a one switching protocol that is called DTP, dynamic trunking protocol. We will co cover the theoretical part as well as the configuration part both in VTP after that VTP after that STP spanning tree protocol. This is also very important topic in the switching after that there is a types of spanning tree that is PVST RSTP. So we will cover the PVST RSTP both here in the switching part after covering STP we will cover the ether channel. Why we need Ether channel, how we can configure the Ether channel, what are the protocols of Ether channel, everything we are going to cover here. I hope you guys understand it till now. Anyone have any doubt, any question? Anyone? For me, no question. Okay. Now, after completing the switching part, we will start routing. In routing, our first topic will be the concept of routing. In concept of routing, we will discuss what is routing, what is the behavior of router, and how we can route the packet and how we can send the packet from source to destination. Everything we are co cover in the basic of routing concept. After that, basically there are two types of routing. First is static and second one is dynamic. So we will discuss what is static routing, what is dynamic routing, how we can cover, how we can configure the static routing, 
how we can configure the dynamic routing how is dynamic routing is complete different from the static routing and what is the benefit of static routing and what is the benefit of dynamic routing everything we are going to cover here after that we know if you guys have something knowledge about the network you guys know router maintain one table that the name of that table is routing table fine so we will discuss routing table what how routing table will form how router will take the any forwarding decision on the basis of routing table everything we are going to cover here after that guys we will cover the routing decision process it means whenever any packet will reach on the router how router will take the forwarding decision everything we are, we are going to cover here after that static routing and default routing we will cover these things also here now in routing basically there are two main protocol first one is eigrp and second one is guys ospf first one is eigrp and second one is ospf okay so be uh, before this there was one more protocol that is called rip protocol but now cisco already removed this protocol from its syllabus so nowadays now uh, we are not using even in the real scenario we are not using the rip protocol fine so we have two main protocol that is called eigrp and ospf and we will discuss the redistribution what is redistribution how we can configure the redistribution basically the redistribution means for example this is the router number 1 this is the router number 2 and this is the router number 3 if three routers are connected like this for example here we are running the eigrp for example in this area we are running the ospf these are the two complete different protocol right everyone tell me yes or no right here in this area we are running the eigrp and in this area we are running the ospf these are complete two different routing protocol it means when if i want to ping from here to here this is not possible because r1 is a part of eigrp and r3 is a part of ospf but how we can make communication possible by the help of redistributions so we will un understand what is redistribution and how we can configure the redistribution everything here tell me everyone are you guys understand or not yes you understand yeah now so far so good okay now after completing the eigrp on ospf we will discuss the basic overview of bgp basically officially in ccne syllabus there is no bgp but nowadays these protocol is in trending if uh, you are working in real scenarios this protocol is quite trending so that's the reason i will give you the overview of bgp as well so you guys have some knowledge about the bgp so whenever any interviewer will ask you any questions related to the bgp i hope you guys have definitely some answer so you can tell him getting my point everyone so that's the reason i will give you the overview of bgp as well fine now nowadays we know there is a trending part that is called security for example if you are applying for any job so when you read the job description there will be a security part i hope everyone is uh, here uh, complete is uh, its bachelor and you guys are applying for the job so i hope you guys already give the many interview and i hope you guys already see many uh, job descriptions so i hope you guys already see the in job description there is a security part because every organization nowadays want security fine because let's suppose this is our network so definitely as a network admin as a uh, project manager or as a uh, company or definitely i want the secure to secure our network getting my point so that that's the reason now it is security is the more more concerning part so that's the reason guys in ccna we are going to cover the port security http root guard port fast acl dhcp snooping 
ARP inspection. So these are our topic for the security and we are going to cover these topic in the security part. Clear everyone. Tell me. Now after yeah. completing the security part, we have some other technology like we are going to discuss what is telnet what is ssh what is the difference between telnet and what is the difference between ssh after that we will discuss the dhcp how, what is the use of dhcp and how we can configure the dhcp fine for example this is our dhcp server what is the use of dhcp server for example this is our pc so you know every devices have valid ip address right or no without ip address we cannot communicate with source to destination over the network right i hope these things you guys understand right for example if i want to send letter to you if i don't know what is your address how can i send it is possible no it is not possible in the real scenario similarly in case of network for example this is pc number one and this is PC number two. If PC number one to communicate with PC number two, definitely PC number one the IP address of PC number two. If PC number one don't know what is the IP address of PC number two and PC number two don't know what is the IP address of PC number one, how communication will perform? Is it possible? Answer is no. It is not possible. Getting my point everyone tell me yes or no. Yes. So basically what we need to do we need to configure the ip address on pc number one and pc number two if you want to make communication possible in a network between two or more devices definitely you need to configure the ip address without ip address we can't communicate so we need to configure the ip address on pc number one and pc number two there are two ways by which we can configure the IP address on PC number one and PC number two. First one is statically and second one is dynamically. So statically means we will go on PC number one and just assign the IP address that is called a static guys. And what is dynamic in real scenarios? We are not going to assign the IP address statically. Why? Because let's suppose if you are working in an organization and in your organization, let's suppose more than thousand user or two thousand users are working so is it really useful to go on each and every uh, users and assign the ip address manually no this is disgusting this is not possible getting my point everyone tell me yes or no yes and this is the big challenges for the network admin also let's suppose if you are assigning the ip address to thousand and more than thousand user definitely you guys have to maintain the large inventory tell me yes or no yes that is the big challenges for the network admin. So that's the reason we have a concept of DHCP by the help of DHCP. We can assign the IP address to all the users dynamically. There is no need to go on each and every users and assign the IP address manually. So that is the use of DHCP. We will dig out more and more about the DHCP in our coming videos or in our coming classes. I hope you guys understand something about the DHCP. Tell me. Yes, you understand. Yes, you understand. Okay. Okay. Repeat uh, sorry, which one? DHCP. Yes, sir. So I just give the overview of DHCP, what we are going to cover in the DHCP and what is the use of DHCP. Basically, for example, if you ha you have a PC, we have you have a laptop, you have a mobile phone, have any devices by which you are communicating from one user to different user and from one source to different source. Definitely you need the IP address without IP address. You can't communicate over the Internet. Getting my point. So basically you can configure the IP address manually or dynamically. So if you are configuring the IP address manually, that is called static IP address. And when you are configuring the IP address dynamically, that is known as DHCP. So DHCP is the server where we are storing the IP address and where we have a pool of IP address 
and by the help of dhcp we can assign the ip address dynamically so there is no role of network admin to reach each and every user to assign the ip address statically getting my point so that is dhcp works like a centralized device so if you are so as a network admin you have to manage only and only dhcp server you do not need to go on each and every user and assign the um, any static ip address no there is no need so as a network admin you have to manage only and only one dhcp server getting my point everyone yes yes i have a question yes yes please yes. okay uh, like dhcp is a, like a, a server a server we just use is for dynamic address yes basically dhcp is the device where we will configure the pool of ip address for example on this is our dhcp server and on dhcp mm -hmm. server we configure a pool 10.0.0.1 to 10.0.0.20 and it means this dhcp server will assign the ip address from 10.0.0.1 10.0.0.2 10.0.0.3 to 10.0.0.20 so from 1 to 20 ip address to any pcs which is connecting or which is connected in your network getting okay. my point that is the use of dhcp i hope your doubt is clear now okay so next is guys after dhcp we are going to cover the nat what is nat what are the types of NAT, why we need the NAT, everything we are going to cover in the NAT part. Then after we are going to cover guys syslog. Syslog means whenever you are uh, configuring anything on the CLI. For example, if you are configuring the IP address on a uh, router, definitely you will configure the IP address on the CLI fine on the cli of the device so whenever you are configuring the cli on the device definitely you guys will see the some logs what are those logs what are the meaning of those logs and where those logs will store everything we are going to cover in the syslog part now after that guys we have a topic of wireless so basically in case of wireless i will discuss you what is wireless what are wireless devices for example we will going to discuss about the ap we are going to discuss about the wlc these are the topic we are going to cover in the wireless part after that we have a something overview about the automations and the last topic will be guys virtualization what is the use of virtualization and how we can configure the virtualization and what are the benefit of virtualization in our real network getting my point so these are the topic we are going to cover anyone have any doubt tell me no thoughts. okay now after this guys i want to tell you something about the applications which we are going uh, to use in this course basically what it what is ccna if anyone asks you okay, tell me you are doing ccna what is the use of ccna and what is ccna anyone anyone know something about the ccna what is the full form of ccna cisco certified network associate cisco certified Certified. network associate and this is the certification which is provided by the cisco yes. which is this is the basic yes. certification which is provided by the cisco so right now you guys are doing the training of ccna after completing the training of ccna you must need to complete the ccna certification from the cisco getting my point everyone so basically if you want to enter in an uh, IT industry. So this is the basic certification which every company need that is called CCNA guys. So that's the reason this is the basic certification. If you want to enter in any IT domain, for example, in the networking domain, definitely you guys must have the CCNA knowledge and CCNA certification getting my point. So that is 
CCNA. So basically, in CCNA, what are the tools or what are the applications we need? For example, guys, we are going to cover the theoretical part as well as the practical part also, right? For each and every topic, we are going to cover the labs. So if we are going to cover lab, definitely we guys need some applications for the practical. Tell me yes or no. Yes. 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 So, anyone have any idea which applications we are using for the practical or for the lab setup? Anyone? Uh, application the it has to be Pocket Tracer or yes. GNS3. GNS3. Exact. Cisco Packet Tracer. So guys, for CCNA, we need Cisco Packet Tracer. If you guys... Are you, are you going to be using uh, GNS, uh, GNS, GNS3? GNS3. For example, if you have higher configuration of a laptop, then you guys go with the GNS3 as well. But GNS3 is recommended for CCNP. GNS3 is recommended for the CCNP. Fine, okay. but I will show you how to, but you, as a CCNA, I hope and I am expecting everyone have Cisco Packet Tracer in your laptop. Getting my point, everyone? Tell me. Yes, yes, we have. Yes, yeah. Okay, if you guys already installed, then fine. Otherwise, I can show you where we can install it. For example, you have uh, in my in my laptop, this is already installed. So how you can install anyone or uh, just tell me one thing, anyone who do not installed, just let me know so they can uh, share his screen and I will guide how can install uh, that's better. Anyone? I think you will have. No, everyone already installed. That's cool. Guys. No, sir. I have not installed the software. Okay. Uh, what's your name? Monjurul Islam, sir. Okay. So, uh, can you share your screen then? Okay, sir. I'm trying to share. So, you joined with the laptop or you joined with the phone? Uh, actually, I have uh, joined okay, with no the phone. No, no worries. I just uh, tell you how you can install it. Okay, na? so it will help you. Fine. For example, okay, I just write here, download Cisco Packet Tracer. So, oh, oh. download Cisco Packet Tracer. So, see now, this is the first website, netted.com. So, here you have to go. And here, th there is an option called Login, guys. Right now? So here you need to click on the login part and here you guys need to create your account. Getting my point everyone without account you can't download it. Fine. For example, I already created the account. Fine. And if you guys do not create the account, you guys need to click on the sign up. Right. Everyone tell me clear. For example, I just click on the login part. Login. Okay, so I hope my screen is visible to all of you now, right? I just create created my account and uh, if you guys do not create your account, so you guys need to sign up with your email ID and the valid password. Getting my point, everyone tell me yes or no? I right, tell me. Yes, sir. Okay, so after sign up now, you will you guys will get now these these type of a screen. Fine. After sign up, you guys will get this type of a screen. So here now you guys need to go in the resources part. So see in resources, there is an option download packet tracer. So you have to click here on download packet tracer. So when you click on the download packet tracer, see here in the download section, this is for the Mac and this is for the Windows. For Windows, there is a 64 bit. So you guys need to click on the 64 bit. Fine and one exe file will download getting my point everyone tell me yes or no yes one exe file will download then after you guys need to install it nothing else 
Fine. Anyone have any doubt now? How we can install the Cisco Packet Tracer? Tell me. Are you tell me? No, sir. Okay. So I just show you how Packet Tracer will looks like. Just a minute. Is it visible to all of you? So guys, basically Cisco packet tracer looks like this. And this is the tool where we are going to cover the lab part. Fine. These are the routers. See, na? these are the network device. Now, when I click on the network device, the first is router. So these are the models of the router. Fine. For example, this is the latest one, 2911. I just, if I want to work here, just I click on the drag and down here, drag and down here. And these are the switches. So if I want switch, I just click here, drag and down here. Getting my point. Everyone tell me yes or no. Yes. These are the end devices. When I click on the end devices, see these are the PCs, laptop, server, PCs, laptop, server. So these are the networking device. Fine. If I want to connect these devices, so you need to connect on the connection part. Click on connection. So these are the cables. So generally we are using this one. So see. So this is the way how we can connect these devices like this these devices like this i hope you guys understand it tell me yes or no yes so basically guys yes. okay. these are these are the tool these this is the application we need for the lab part fine and i hope you guys must need to install this application in your laptop clear now after that there is a one point which I want to share with you. Let's suppose if I cover any topic, for example, if I cover the DTP dynamic trunking protocol, if I cover the v VLAN fine, for example, I cover the VLAN topic after completing the theoretical part of the VLAN, I will show you how we can configure the VLAN, how we can configure the native VLAN, everything I will show you the practically as well. But the now the next thing is how you guys will do the lab. The next thing how you guys will do the lab. For this I have one solution. Solution is I will share some file with you. When you open that file in your Cisco packet tracer, my lab will open in your packet tracer. You do not need to <laughs> configure and you do not need to create more topology from your side. Getting my point? You just need to open my topology in your packet tracer and my topology will open in your packet tracer. Getting my point everyone. For example, see, for example, I I just go here. For example, these are the APK files I will share with you. For example, VLAN, I will share this file with you. What you guys need to do? You guys just right click on and click on the open. So when you open it, my lab will open in your Cisco packet tracer. Getting my point and see these lab is already created here. What you guys need to do? You guys need to just configure it and troubleshoot it and configure it. That's all. You do not need to create these type of topologies. Getting my point. Maybe it. I hope this will help you. Everyone. Tell me. Anyone? Yeah, oh, good. Uh can you also maybe like uh, show us how to uh, create the topology from scratch? Maybe if you can test us on that part as well, then uh, creating the whole topology for us. Yes, definitely. For example, let's suppose I want uh, to create something. How you can create, for example, you need two routers. So you just need to pick this rou two router. Fine. Let's suppose I need one switch. Switch, for example, how we can create the topology see this is very simple i need one laptop i need one server this type of topology how we we can connect this is the router see i connect here 
this is this router connect with the switch like this this switch will connect like pc with the pc like this this switch will connect with this laptop like this this switch will connect with the server like this so see the topology is created now tell me everyone uh, sir what is the gig uh, sorry your voice is dropping hello uh, sir am i audible yes now audible again not audible okay anyone have any question no no questions from my side okay anyone is it okay okay cool okay so islam basically gig and fast ethernet so these are the different type of interface fine we are we will cover these uh, things also what is the difference between fast ethernet and gig so fast ethernet will support the 100 mbps speed fine and gig will support 1 gbps speed so that is the difference between fast ethernet and 1 giga so nowadays we are using gig not fast fine but if you are doing the lab so definitely you guys will get the fast ethernet as well as gig both fine so that is the basic difference between fast ethernet and gig okay apart from this guys i will share max to max notes with you fine for example in our first class we are going to cover see overview of the first class the introduction of network fine so this is our slide if you guys want i will share this slide with you otherwise if you guys have already have some notes or some uh, additional content you guys can read it but if you guys need my content or my notes so definitely i will share with you you guys can read it and definitely it will help you uh yes plus uh, kindly share all your material okay cool. i hope my screen is visible to all of you also right now I start with the first topic guys that is called introduction of network anyone who can tell me what is network anyone who can define me what do you mean by network so oh. or more devices connected together okay so you are telling two or more devices are connected with each other and share the resources with each other and communicate with each other that is called a network am i right everyone yes okay for example if i have a pc number 1 so by the help of only one device can i create a network yes or no No. no no definitely no guys by the help of one device we cannot create a network so if i want to create a network definitely we need more than two or more than two devices for example if we have a pc number 2 and if i connect pc number 1 and pc number 2 like this so is it called a network yes yeah. it is called a network 
getting my point so if anyone ask you define network how you can define network means when two or more than two devices are directly or indirectly connected with each other communicate with each other share resources with each, with each other that is called a network for example this is see this is one switch and through this switch multiple pcs are connected multiple pcs are connected like this so is it called a network yes this is called network why this is called a network because there are 1 2 3 4 and 5 five devices are connected with each other directly connected with each other so that the reason this is called network i hope you guys understand it what is network i told you one more line <laughs> line is network means this is not mandatory all the devices is directly connected for example let's suppose this is my home and in my home there is one router i hope everyone is using the router fine and through this router your multiple devices for example a uh, router means guys wifi okay now wifi router and through this router your multiple devices for example your pc your laptop your mobile phone your tablet multiple devices is connected so is this a part of network yes this is also called a network so that the reason i am telling you network means your devices are directly or indirectly connected with each other and share the resources with, with each other and communicate with each other that is called a network getting my point everyone tell me yes or no yes so that is called guys network now anyone have any question any doubt in what is network anyone who do not understand what is network okay now guys i write one example here imagine a network of computer in an office each computer is connected to a central server through a cable or wireless this network allows employees to share files print a access the internet collectively for example this is our office and in this office for example this is the switch and through this switch there are multiple users who is sitting on the desk and on this desk there are multiple lan port and all the users are connecting its devices through the lan port and this lan port is connected with the switch like this so this is called network or not anyone this yes, is called yes it's it's network lan yes it's network for example again this is our office and in this office there is a wifi and multiple employees are accessing this wifi and using internet using internet and sharing the resources with each, with each other so that is called a network or not yes this is also called network i hope you guys understand it anyone any doubt okay now next is guys end user prospective of network end user prospective means for example i am the end user i don't know a b c d about the network it means i don't know nothing about the network i am just normal user you are the network admin i am the normal user so if i am the normal user definitely i don't know about the network tell me yes or no yes tell me yes na so for example we all are the technical person right so if uh, you ask anything about the non technical person who don't know anything about the technology so according to him what do you mean by network so for example i am the end user i don't know anything about the network i don't know anything about the technology if you ask me i provide you the network but what you want from my side what i want as a end user guys try to understand these things as a end user we want generally all the end user want 
three things. These are the three priority for every end user. First is confidentiality. Second is integrity. And third one is availability. Getting my point? Everyone tell me yes or no. Yes. Basically, yes. as a end user, every end user want three things. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. What do you mean by confidentiality? Confidentiality means, see here what I write. Confidentiality ensure that information is only accessible to the authorized individual or entities. This means that unauthorized user should not be able to access sensitive data. For example, guys, I hope everyone is using the Facebook. Yes or no? Yes or Instagram. For example, if I am using the Facebook, it means, for example, if I am uploading anything on the Facebook, your every data, every file, everything is going to store on Facebook server. Tell me yes or no. Yes. Tell me. Yes. Yes. So whatever you are posting, whatever you are uploading, everything is going to store on the Facebook server. It means if Facebook server, so according to the Facebook server, you are the end user. Tell me yes or no. Yes or no. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm yes. not, Thank I'm you. not the Mark Zuckerberg, but according to the Mark Zuckerberg, you guys and everyone is the user end user. Tell me yes or no. Yes. For example, if we are uploading anything on the Facebook and if Facebook is not providing us the confidentiality, integrity and availability, we guys will store anything on the Facebook. No, definitely no. Are you tell me yes or no? Yes, na. For example, this is me and I upload any picture on the Facebook. So definitely if I am the user of Facebook, so it means I have my credential, my username and password. Tell me yes or no. Yes. Yes. So if I have my username and password, it means I am the authorized user for my account. Tell me yes or no. Yes, definitely. I am the authorized user for my account. It means only I can access my account. Getting my point, everyone. If Facebook will share my personal data, my personal credential with anyone, it means that is the breach of confidentiality. Tell me yes or no. Yes, this is the breach of confidentiality. It means Facebook is not providing you the confidentiality sec factor. And as an end user, everyone want confidentiality. If we are not getting the confidentiality, definitely we are not going to create an account on the Facebook and we are not going to upload anything on the Facebook. Tell me, everyone, yes or no? Yes. So what do you mean by confidentiality, guys? Confidentiality means if you are storing anything, any information on as a individual or as a entities on any server, it means you and only you are the authorized person and any unauthorized user cannot access your sensitive data without your permission. That is called confidentiality. Fine. Everyone tell me yes or no. Anyone have any doubt in confidentiality? Anyone who do not understand confidentiality? Let me know. Anyone? Uh, so is this a uh, part of security? Yes, you can say like this. For example, I just tell you one thing. For example, you are sending me an email. Okay. Just a minute. It... Oh, sorry, sir. I missed your name. You said your name is? My name is Subham. Subham. Okay. Thanks, man. Okay. So what I'm telling, for example, this is me and this is you. Fine. Okay. I'm living in India 
and you are living uh, in for South example Africa. okay you let's suppose us for example you are sending me i am sending you an email and you are sending me an email fine definitely if i am sending an email and if you are sending me an email definitely our data will travel over the internet tell me yes or no yes yeah that's correct yes so guys tell me one thing internet is open for all you know na internet is open for all it means internet is complete open for you complete open for me and complete open for any hacker as well tell me yes or no yes everyone yes it means for example i am sending you an email through my office within my i am uh, right now i am inside my office and you are also inside your office it means if i and you are inside the office it means you are in the secure zone right tell me yes or no yes na there are multiple technology we are using firewall many thing and by the help of uh, these things we are securing our lan network or office network right so that's the reason yes. for example you are sitting inside your office and i am sitting inside my office we are in the secure zone but if we are sending any data over the internet it means that is we are sending our any data publicly it means internet is open for everyone fine so that's the reason we want security over the internet as well tell me yes or no yes na for as a end user we want the confidentiality over the internet for example if i am sharing my any credential with you through the through an email if there is an hacker this hacker just access uh, your email data and know your credential which you are sharing with me so definitely it provide you the confidentiality no this is not providing you the confidentiality and you are using let's suppose gmail and you are sending me and me an email through the gmail and but your data is not confidential so definitely from the next time definitely you never trust on the gmail tell me yes or no yes but try to yes. understand if we are sending the data over the internet and how your uh, how gmail will work basically for example if i am sharing the password welcome at the rate 1234 this is the password i am sharing with you but if this data will go over the internet like a plain text like a plain text it means any hacker can easily read the, read it there is a no problem tell me yes or no so that's the reason what gmail will do gmail provide you one facility that is called encryption what is guys encryption what what encryption will do encryption will convert your uh, simple text language welcome at the rate 1234 into any random language getting my point for example star has 12 at the rate a b c like this getting my point so if any hacker will get and try to uh, read your data this hacker will get this one but by the help of this this data is already encrypted how hacker will know what is the password you, which you are sharing with me don't possible getting my point so that's the reason i am telling confidentiality means if you are sending any data from any source to destination we want confidentiality as a end user means if uh, i am i and only i am the authorized person with my data so any unauthorized user cannot access any data that is called the confidentiality and for example encryption if you are sending me uh, if you are sending an email through the internet on internet your data will encrypt so any end user or any hacker will want to uh, see your data it's not possible because of the encryption fine i hope you guys understand confidentiality tell me Yes, we understand. Now, next is guys. Basically, on the internet, there are two types of data. First one is static data, and second one is floating data. What do you mean by static data, and what do you mean by floating data? Try to understand. A static data means reside in the database. files or other storage system is accessed as needed for example guys i just give you the example of facebook for example this is the facebook server 
if you are storing or if you are uploading anything on the facebook everything will store on the facebook server tell me yes or no yes and facebook server is statically fixed at any location so it means that type of data is called static data static data means whenever you are storing your data on any database that is called static data are you tell me yes or no everyone understand or not right for example if you are storing anything in your phone memory that is called a static data getting my point what do you mean by floating data if you are sending me an e uh, message through the whatsapp so that is called floating data because you are sending me a message through the internet that is called floating data tell me yes or no yes so i hope you guys understand what is the difference between static data and floating data static data means the data which is inside the which is stored inside the database that is called static data floating data means the database and the data which will flow over the internet that is called floating data fine for example whatsapp now everyone want the confidentiality over the static data as well as the floating data for example if you guys know one thing if you guys uh, see the whatsapp message sir. even mm -hmm. sir if we store the whatsapp images then what will be what will you to, uh, tell is static data or floating data it will be i'm not if getting... we store what huh? if we store whatsapp images or pictures or something like that in our yes. phone memory it, yes, then it will is... be called static data or floating data that will called static data for example the, uh, this is you and this is me if i am sending you the data over the internet na that type of data is called the floating data because right now this is floating when this data will reach on your mobile phone and you are storing in your storage device that is called the static data okay sir getting my point so on yes, static data <sighs> as well as on the floating data on both data we want the what we want we want the confidentiality we want the confidentiality are you tell me yes or no yes sir, sir. Yes. is the same if i i have a, an account on, on facebook mhm mm may for example my name may, i don't know my data and uh, if i want to uh, how can i explain if i i want to share a picture is the mm -hmm. same yes for example uh, this is you and mm -hmm. you are uh, this is the facebook right and uh, just like remember like this uh, understand like this ki whenever you are uh, uploading and whenever you were sharing anything over the facebook it means everything is going to store on the facebook server fine yeah. so it means let's suppose you share anything on the facebook okay. if you want to see these things or after 5 year definitely you are able to see it getting my point so yeah. basically everything is stored in the facebook server so if you are uh, sharing anything over the facebook that will store inside the facebook server that is called the static data and for example if you are downloading anything from the facebook so it means your file is traveling through the internet right so that is called floating data and when this data will reach inside your phone and if you download that file and store in in your memory that is called again static data Uh -huh. fine for the best example is whatsapp i just show you one thing just a minute i hope my whatsapp is uh, visible to all of you right for example this is the guy when i share anything see here this line what is this line messages are end to end encrypted it means whenever you are sending anything through the whatsapp your messages is end to end encrypted it means what do you mean by this it means whatever you are sending for example i write here jai sri krishna it means i am writing in the plain text but when this user will uh, when this data will reach over the uh, to the user that user also get jai sri krishna but on the internet part it will encrypt 
so nobody can read my data i hope you guys understand it very well tell me thank you thank you okay next is guys integrity what do you mean by integrity see integrity ensure that data remains accurate complete and unaltered during its life cycle it means that information cannot be modified or tampered by any unauthorized individual or processes what do you mean by it see here this is me i look smart right na yes this is my colleague he is ugly let's suppose if i am sending anything this is the internet guys okay isp isp means this is the internet if i am sending anything and this is one hacker everyone tell me this is the hacker let's suppose if i am writing here uh if i want to share anything let's suppose welcome at the rate 1 2 i am sharing this password with my colleague so definitely this password will go uh, through the internet tell me yes or no yes na everyone yes sir okay so for example i am sharing this password through any application for example through the gmail i am sharing this password with my colleague through the gmail so definitely what do you mean by confidentiality confidentiality provide the encryption right na for example this welcome at the rate 1 2 3 part is converted like this encrypted like this at the rate 1 2 3 4 four has like this so it means over the internet this is floating tell me yes or no yes for yes. example this is yes, the sir. hacker this hacker is using multiple tool nowadays there are multiple tool by which any hacker can hack these type of data fine or encrypted data so this hacker what this hacker do this hacker just read your data and perform any type some uh, some modification for example uh, you are sharing welcome at the rate 1 2 3 4 now this hacker add welcome at the rate 4 3 2 1 and share this data uh, with your colleague it means what is happening here happening means you are sending the password welcome at the rate 1 2 3 but your friend is getting what welcome at the rate 4 3 2 1 it means your actual data is modified over the internet tell me yes or no yes your actual data is modified over the internet and who is doing that this type of modification this is the hacker this hacker is doing the modification and you are sharing this data with gmail so if you are sharing any data through the gmail if you are sharing any data through the gmail and your data is modifying altered over the internet definitely this is not integrity so as a integrity what you want you want whatever i am sending the exact data our friend our colleague will get tell me yes or no everyone yes yes sir yes that is called the integrity so as a end user as a end user if we are using any internet we want integrity for example in india guys there are the main isp we are using jio we are using uh, airtel these are the main isp for example if uh, we i am using the jio and if anything i am sharing through the jio network everything is getting altered if anything is going modified over the internet from the next day i am not using the jio tell me yes or no yes because at a end user what we want we want integrity over the internet it means whatever we are sending from any source to any destination 
we want whatever i am sending our end user will get exact the same thing getting my point everyone tell me yes or no i hope you guys understand what do you mean by integrity anyone anyone have any doubt in, in integrity okay anyone any doubt okay next availability what do you mean by availability any idea okay so see guys as a end user what is our requirement and what we want from uh, a network or from an any isp for example i am using the jio and in my home jio uh, router i installed the jio router in my home and i am paying a monthly bill to the this isp so as a end user what i want anyone i want ki if i am paying the monthly uh, uh, rent or monthly bill to this isp i want this inter, uh, this router or this isp will provide me the internet connectivity 100% it means yeah. 24 into 7 tell me yes or no yes yes everyone want ki if we are paying the bills everyone wants availability nowadays so definitely what do you mean by availability availability means whatever we need our network will be available whatever whenever we need our network will be available that is called availability anyone have any question any doubt availability no next one more thing for example i just give here one one thing example load balancing consider a popular e-commerce website that experience a surge in the traffic during the holiday sale for example amazon let's suppose on amazon there is a big billion sale for example uh, today is 10th of may 10th of may to 15th of may from uh, 9 pm to 10 pm this is the time where amazon is providing the big billion sale uh, amazon is providing let's suppose 80% discount as a end user what you want what you will do you guys definitely will access the amazon and try to reach the amazon between this time tell me yes or no everyone yes yes so as a end user maximum to maximum user will access the amazon application amazon website between 9 pm to 10 pm it means the traffic amazon will receive between 9 pm to 10 pm is maximum tell me yes or no yes so definitely amazon is also using networking devices like router switches and uh, servers tell me yes or no yes definitely amazon is also using the networking devices like server and if let's suppose maximum to maximum packets or maximum uh, traffic will reach within this hour at amazon server definitely it is possible amazon server will crash tell me yes or no everyone everyone tell me uh could you could you kindly maybe uh just explain the whole process again from the from the beginning um availability right okay thank you availability means i just give you the one example availability means your network should be available 24 into 7 and your network will provide you the connectivity 100% that is the main motive of availability clear anyone okay. 
Now, yes, clear. For example, I just mentioned one example that is the load balancing example. See, for example, there is a one uh, e-commerce website or company that is called Amazon. And in Amazon, for example, Amazon provide one offer or release one offer from 10th May to 15th May between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. There is a big billion sale and our company provide 90% discount on every product. As an end user, what you will do? Definitely as an end user, we will access Amazon application or Amazon website between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. Tell me yes or no. Yes? Yes, yes. So, for example, normally Amazon is getting 50 packets. 50 packets or 50 traffic between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. as a normal day. But if suddenly between 10th of May to 15th of May, between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., if Amazon is getting 5 lakhs, 5 lakhs packet at the same time, definitely it is possible that your Amazon server will crash. Tell me yes or no. Yes? Yes. As a normal days, let's suppose Amazon is getting max to max 50 packets or 50 traffic between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. But if Amazon is suddenly getting 5 lakhs, 5 lakh packets between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m., definitely it is possible Amazon server will cannot access these packet and Amazon server will crash. It is possible now. But how? e-commerce companies will provide you the load balancing and solve these type of problem or how uh, Amazon will prevent these type of thing. Basically, there is a concept of load balancing. What is the concept guys? Load balancing. For example, I just give you one more example. For example, I am working in a company and uh, this is my manager. And if I am working here, and if I am working and working on multiple tasks, multiple tasks, if my manager see me and uh, if my manager realize and Subham is working nine hours continuously, there is no break, then what my manager will do? Definitely my manager will distribute my working load to other employees as well. Tell me yes or no. Yes, na? Everyone? Yes, sir. Yes. Similarly, what Amazon will do, Amazon or any Flipkart or any company have maximum server. There is not only one server, guys. There will be a maximum server at every location. Getting my point? For example, for in case of Amazon, in India, let's suppose this is the Bangalore. Bangalore, there are two Amazon servers. For example, Delhi, 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 there are four server. There are maximum server on the Amazon. So what Amazon will do? Amazon perform the load balancing technique and by the help of load balancing technique, if Amazon is getting the high number of traffic, Amazon will distribute that packet through all the server. So it means what will happen on any one single server, there will be a very less load. So that's the reason. And by the help of load balancing, Amazon can easily perform any big billion sale or any anything getting my point so basically this is the example of availability so every users every company want availability it means for example uh, uh, Amazon server is going crash so it means what will happen there is a loss of business loss of business so what Amazon will do Amazon by the help of load balancing Amazon perform the availability it means any user can reach the available uh, reach the Amazon and can uh, perform any types of shopping between 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. There will be a no problem because of the load balancing. I hope you guys understand the availability part. Everyone. Uh, sir, load yes, yes. Sir, load balancing. Sir, load balancing technique will be worker uh, uh, self or uh, it should be monitored by I manually. We should done by other network yes. engineers. Yes, it will done by the network engineer. Basically, 
how we can perform the load balancing and how load balancing will occur we are going to cover in the routing part i will show you how router will get the multiple packet from the same destination same source and how router will perform the load balancing yes we are doing this manually we need to configure the things over the router over the networking device if you are getting the packet you have to distribute this packet through multiple servers getting my point so by this way we can reduce the load on any one network devices otherwise if one device is getting maximum load definitely your devices will getting crash fine getting my point everyone yes anyone have any more question now apart from this guys we have a types of communication we have a types of communication so just for your information i just tell you there are basically three type of communication how many type of communication guys three types of communication first is unicast second one is multicast and third one is broadcast first is unicast second one is multicast and third one is broadcast so there are how many types of communication there are three types of communication unicast multicast and broadcast what do you mean by unicast anyone have any idea one to one communication when there's one sender and one receiver okay just uh, give me a minute okay i'm audible yes sir okay now unicast what do you mean by unicast guys see unicast means see unicast communication involve sending the data packet from one sender to one specific receiver guys please focus on here one sender to one specific receiver that is called unicast and unicast communication is also known as one to one communication try to understand this is pc number 1 this is pc number 2 both pcs are connected with the lan cable like this pc number 1 is sending any data to pc number 2 and pc number 2 is sending any data to pc number 1 it means which type of communication is this guys this is called unicast communication because there is only one sender and there is only one receiver that is called unicast communication i hope you guys understand what do you mean by unicast unicast is also known as one to one communication getting my point everyone any doubt in unicast unicast means one device is sending and to one device any specific one device only so that is called unicast fine for example see sending an email from one person to another it means this is me and this is you i am sending an email to you only 
so this is called unicast or multicast this is called the unicast tell me yes or no everyone i hope you guys understand unicast unicast means one to one communication what? one pc is communicating with pc number 2 and pc number 2 is directly communicating with pc number 1 that is called unicast now <laughs> next is multicast multicast means multicast is also known as one to many communication multicast is also known as one to many communication it means multicast communication involve sending the data packet from one sender to multiple specific receiver try to understand one thing guys for example this is the switch this is the switch and what is the use of switch by the help of switch we can connect multiple device what is switch what what is the use of switch we will discuss this later but for your information i just tell you one line the switch is a networking device and by the help of switch we can connect multiple device in an internet getting my point everyone tell me okay this is pc number 1 pc number 2 how many pcs are connected guys there are four pcs are connected with the switch tell me anyone everyone how many pcs are connected there are four pcs are connected with the switch now see try to understand for example pc number 1 is hr pc pc number 2 is HRPC, PC number three is HRPC, PC number four is ITPC. So it means what is happening here? HR is communicating with the HR. HR is communicating with the HR. So it means what will happen? Try to understand. For example, this is the HR, and this HR ping share the packet, and this packet will reach on switch. Tell me yes or no. Yes. What switch will do? Switch will forward this packet towards rest HR PC number two and PC number three. This switch will never forward this packet towards the IT. So it means this is called one to one or multicast. Multicast. This is called multicast. Multicast means this is called one to many communication. It means PC number one is communicating with PC number two. as well as pc number 3 that is called one to many communication i hope you guys understand what is unicast and what is multicast tell me everyone yes anyone am any doubt unicast and multicast unicast means one to one for example this is pc number 1 this is pc number 2 PC number one is communicating with PC number two. PC number two is communicating with PC number one. That is called unicast. This is router number one. This is router number two. Both routers are communicating with each other. That is called unicast. Fine. For example, this is the switch, and through this switch, multiple PCs are multiple routers are connected. And let's suppose three routers, four routers are communicating with each other. That is called multicast. I hope you guys understand. Unicast and multicast. Yes, we understand. Okay, now the next is guys broadcast. It is also known as one to all communication. It is also called one to all communication. What do you mean by it? Try to understand. For example. 
this is hr pc this is it department pc this is finance department pc this is for example account department pc this is sales department pc everyone any doubt here till now no now for example this is the hr this hr oh. wants to announce something in in his company this is this is the company and this hr wants to announce some notification in his company what it what it will do let's suppose this is the hr this hr wants to announce uh, anything for example this hr wants to announce tomorrow is holiday tomorrow is holiday leave public leave so what this hr will do hr will share this information as a broadcast as a broadcast it means this packet will reach here on the switch what switch will do switch will forward towards sales towards account towards finance towards it in every department and that type of communication is known as broadcast communication mm -hmm. that type of communication is known as guys broadcast communication broadcast communication means one to all it means hr is sharing the information and that information is received by every department like it finance account sales every department is getting the information that is called broadcast mm -hmm. tell me anyone have any doubt unicast multicast and broadcast anyone no doubt okay cool now after that guys unicast and multicast and broadcast we have modes of communication what is modes of communication basically in a network there are three modes of communication first is simplex second one is half duplex and third one is full duplex there are how many types of communicate modes of communication guys three mode of communication simplex half duplex and full duplex so don't be confused in types of communication and mode of communication there are three type of communication unicast multicast and broadcast and there are how many modes of communication simplex half duplex and full duplex fine now the first is simplex what do you mean by simplex see here in simplex communication data travel in only one direction from the sender to the receiver guys try to understand sender to receiver means this is the sender this is the receiver simplex communication means if this is the sender this can only send the data this can only send the data it cannot receive the data and this is the receiver this receiver can only receive the data that is called simplex communication that is called simplex communication getting my point everyone tell me for example everyone is using the television so for example this is the television and this is me i am watching the television it means this is the television which is providing the information are you tell me yes or no yes na i am the end user i am not providing the any information to the tv tell me yes or no so that is called simplex communication guys tell me yes or no anyone have any doubt in simplex simplex means sender can only send the data and receiver can only receive the data getting my point sender cannot receive the data and receiver cannot send the data for example television television is only sending you the data and you are only a viewer you cannot provide any content uh, inside the tv getting my point are you tell me yes or no yes you understand why you guys are so silent are you guys understanding or not yes we understand yes yes 
okay cool thank you for example i just tell you one more thing for funny part for example this is my television and this is me i am watching this tv now for example here is an actor and actor is dancing so uh, i feel this actor is not uh, performing uh, um, exact step uh, according to the song so is it possible i can go inside the tv and i i will dance no of course not <laughs> yes definitely it's not because we are a viewer so whatever you are watching in the tv tv is providing you the data and you are only viewer so that is simplex communication so as a viewer you cannot do anything you cannot send anything fine so you can only view and television only perform so that's the reason that is called simplex communication guys i hope you guys understand simplex <laughs> now half duplex half duplex data can travel in both direction but but not simultaneously guys try to understand what is the meaning of half duplex it alternates between sending and receiving only one party can send the data at a time and other party must wait to receive or respond for example try to understand what is half duplex this is sender this is receiver in case of half duplex both can send and receive the data both can send the send and receive the data but in case of simplex sender can only send and receiver can only receive but in case of half duplex both it can also send it can also receive it can also send and it can also receive but the problem is not at a same time not at a same time it means if this is the sender if this is the receiver if sender is sending the data at the same time receiver cannot send the data what receiver need to do receiver need to wait until receiver receive the data when receiver will receive the overall data then after receiver can send any data that is half duplex that is half duplex so what is half duplex guys in case of half duplex sender and receiver both can send the data but not at a same time if sender is sending the data to the receiver receiver must have to wait to receive the data when receiver will receive the data then after receiver can send the data that is called half duplex for example if you uh, see if anyone see walkie talkie generally we are using walkie talkie in the army uh, we are using walkie talkie in the security uh, security also security guard is also using walkie talkie in railway generally we are using the walkie talkie i hope you guys know the walkie talkie right Can you tell me yes or no? Yes, sir. The big phone, the kioki, no, the no. kioki. No, no. Walkie talkie like, uh, uh, for example, this is me, this is me, and uh, this is my team. And uh, let's suppose I want to inform something. I will, uh, I I will just uh, talk in my. This is the de device like this phone, uh, like a phone. Fine. So I will. Uh, i will tell in this uh, walkie talkie i am facing any challenges over and out it means why i am telling here over and out over and out means i am just telling whatever i want to tell i my word is complete now you can if you want to tell me something now you can uh, tell here that is the use of walkie talkie fine so walkie talkie is also a half duplex device so in walkie talkie generally we can't uh, communicate we can't send and receive the data at a same time fine that is the use of walkie talkie and that is half duplex guys <coughs> what is full duplex the last one guys in full duplex we can send the data and we can receive the data at a same time for example right now we guys are communicating through the zoom call tell me yes or no 
yes we all guys are on the zoom call it means let's suppose if i am telling you something at the same time you guys can also ask me anything tell me yes or no yes you do not have to wait na ki when i complete my uh, word then after you can uh, tell me something no you can ask me anything at the same time that is called full duplex it means in in case of full duplex you can send the data and you can receive the data at a same time you do not have to wait to finish any data fine it means in full duplex we can send and we can receive at a same time i hope you guys understand it anyone have any question any doubt simplex half duplex full duplex unicast multicast broadcast tell me what is network anything you can give a real uh, example for a full duplex full duplex okay yeah. see for example full duplex we all are using the mobile phone if you are using the mobile phone and if we are communicating through the mobile phone this is the sender this is the receiver sending sender is sending the data receiver can also talk at the same time receiver cannot wait to sender uh, will finish then after i can send no you can perform sending and receiving both part at the same time that is called full duplex for example this is the router this is the router this is the pc number 1 this is the pc number 2 we can send the data we can receive the data at the same time through the router that is called full duplex getting my point i hope you yeah. understand yeah thank you so anyone have any question any doubt no we right. can no 